Indeed. I remember the day. It was uh, just about the conclusion of a very successful coaching experience with one of my top clients. And uh, we had found some great agreements. We had made some good decisions. And uh, we were ready for the next month of uh, business success. And just as I was leaving, his next appointment came in, uh, one of the successful businessmen in town. And so since I was there and he was there and this new guest was there, uh, he decided to introduce me. And uh, he uh, brought me up and said, I'd like you to uh, meet my new friend and uh, colleague. This is Stan. And he is my professional nag. That's right. He's my professional nag. The guy looked at him, smiled, and said, You mean you pay someone to do that? Professional nag. Is that what I am? Well, I've often said that I'm a professional nudge, but nag, that's something else. Well, what I'd like to do is talk about being a little bit of a professional nag and what that might mean to you, to me, and for our work together here on the Jesus Entrepreneur. Help me listen in to the radio station where the mighty host of heaven sleeps. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. If you want to hear the songs of Zion coming from the land of endless spring, get a touch with God. Get a touch with God. Turn your radio on. Indeed, we do welcome you with our little fun medley there of uh, how uh, perhaps uh, you can turn the radio on. <laughs> and you are indeed in touch with uh, the Jesus Entrepreneur. We are personal on-demand radio, like personal on-demand podcast radio. We are radio right now. This is taking place really on Tuesday evening. It is radio for today, and it, of course, is radio right now whenever you want it. That's what, the way it all works. Radio is changing a great deal. I've been involved in radio for, uh, oh, <laughs> maybe 40 years, and uh, here's the deal. Radio is profoundly changing, but radio will always be. We're going to learn more and more how we can use the technology to bring the spoken word to more and more people. Will people start uh, texting more than speaking? Not really. And I'll be able to tell you why in later classes and courses here on the radio. But radio is important, and you're going to have to learn how to use the radio you're going to have to learn how to use the video. You're going to have to learn how to use all of the modern media if you want to be successful in the 21st century. And if you're an entrepreneur, if you are seeking to make your own way in the marketplace, build your own business, you want to expand your brand, you're going to have to learn how to use just exactly what I'm using right now. So uh, I can help you do that. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. That's the way to reach me. Check out all of our good stuff that's coming more and more. www.tcenglobal.org. TCENglobal.org. And uh, you start to join us at the Christian Entrepreneur Network. Well, that's always one of my favorite stories. I've oftentimes described myself with a little bit of a smile that I'm kind of a professional nudge. I kind of nudge people along, perhaps uh, encourage them to get them going in the right direction. What is true of being a coach is you come in and you are fully committed not to making them be anything. You are professional profoundly committed to helping them become what they want more and more to be. So we're not trainers, we're not instructors, we're guides, we're mentors, we're coaches, and uh, the only time I actually will become more of a less than a coach is when I'm perhaps teaching you how to coach yourself. And that's the new approach I'm taking. I have a course that I think is probably one of the best in teaching people how to be a coach. 
and so I could teach you how to be a coach. However, I think the best way for me is to teach you how to coach yourself. And in teaching you how to coach yourself, guess what will happen? You will have the same experience that you want to share with others. So um, as we begin this legacy project of the Christian Entrepreneur Network, Again, my name is Stan Houston, and I've been around as a business performance coach, as an international broadcaster, as an online teacher, simply teaching young adults how to make their mark in the world, and uh, that's how I'm going to leave the world. <laughs> I'm going to finish as a teacher, as a broadcaster, as a modern media mentor, and the legacy I want most of all is that I was a worshiper of the living God, that I was following the Lord Jesus. I was seeking to do in that old world expression, that prayer, which was made modern by God's spell. It is, I want to uh, see him more clearly. I want to uh, love him more dearly. And I want to, uh, you know, follow him more nearly. One of the guides I put together on how to be a coach was simply called The Coaching Experiment. And that's what can a coaching experience do for you. And it's a nice little guide. And by the way, if you'd like a copy of it, why don't you just write to me. Again, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. And I'd be more than happy to send a, a part of this little booklet to you. But I'm going to do just today, and perhaps a bit tomorrow, of telling you exactly why you should learn to coach yourself. And in learning to coach yourself, you can become a coach to others. And whether that's professionally, you want to do it as I did for many years for a good income, or just simply you want to do it because it's a good way to be a good leader, a good parent, perhaps a good boss, a good boss. That's right. There's nothing wrong with being a boss if you're a good boss. As a, one of my friends has said, it's okay to be a shark as long as you're a white shark. That's right. A great white shark. <laughs> you're a good shark, not a dark shark. Well, uh, we actually have a few people in our little fellowship who are venture capitalists like the guys you see on Shark Tank. Only uh, they are not dark sharks. They are great white sharks. And in fact, we're actually going to have some radio coaching sessions with them. And we're going to simply call it the White Shark Hour. The Great White Shark Hour. It'll probably be less than an hour. But it'll be a way for you to learn what you need to know if you're going to be seeking a venture capitalist. Seeking people to do what they don't normally want to do. And that's to give you money. We're going to have an entire coaching experience on how to get people to give you money. That'll be fun. Now, here's what I want to do. Uh, I would like to tell you the story that led to a, an attempt to answer that question and to actually help you discover if maybe coaching is for you. Here we go. Let me tell you a story. Years ago, when I was beginning my business, I did what all entrepreneurs have to do. That's right. You call on people. You seek to tell them your story or make an offer, and you hope for a positive response. Well, I called a gentleman who immediately understood that I was selling, and he quickly cut off my regular script of introduction and kindly and firmly said, Stan, I know what you are doing. I do it myself. Tell me what you got. There you go. That entrepreneur is something you have to remember. Tell me what you got. In other words, get to the bottom line. What do I get if I buy from you or uh, do you what you want? What do I get if I buy from you or do what you want? 
In many years of coaching others, I've discovered that there are seven answers to the question, what you got? Now, it's difficult to find an adequate term to describe or categorize these results of what truly is a coaching experiment. All coaching is an experiment. It's an experience. But uh, there are seven what I call states of being. And it's a combination of state of mind and a state of our performance. Hence, a state of being. And you'll see that will become clear as we describe them. Here's the first one. Greater clarity. Greater clarity about what is true and what to do. A little quote uh, that one of my friends picked up and shared with me. For me, the greatest beauty always lies in the greatest clarity. By a, name, <laughs> by a man named Gattel Lessing. Never heard of him, but a great quote. In the midst of life's complexity, confusion, and chaos, clarity is gained about what to do. Focused conversations about goals, desires, and intentions often bring simplicity, good ideas, and solutions to our busy situations. I have found that the most profound and helpful question to many people is, and uh, what do you want? You know, that is where we start, because most people don't know. Then, the end of a good coaching conversation or experiment is reflected in the statement. Now, that's clear. Greater clarity is what good coaching will do for you. Number two, greater awareness. The greater awareness of human motivation and cause and effect. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance. Nathaniel Brandon, in a coaching conversation, I often say, don't judge, just notice. Be aware. Focus on what is going on, not just on what you are doing. Please tell me, why was that a successful sales presentation? Well, often I hear, well, I knew exactly what was going to happen next, and I was right. I really have come to trust my gut and intuition. I really did connect the dots, and it was obvious what to do. You know, I'm really getting good at knowing how my behavior and language affects others. Now, these are examples of the subtle but vital state of being that we have discovered in many highly successful people. They have greater awareness of what is going on, what is true, and what to do. Greater awareness of what is going on and what to do. And what to do right now is we're going to take just a little bit of break and then come back with number three of seven and uh, perhaps number four, and then we'll save the rest till next time. Take a few moments just to think, and we'll be back. Day by day, day by day. I oftentimes tell people something that I have discovered. It all comes down to energy. Number three, the goal of good coaching is more energy. More energy for greater activity and vitality. Now, in this state of being, 
If this state of being is not achieved, nothing of consequence will happen in good coaching. Personal energy is the capacity for vigorous activity, intensity, and the power of attraction. Energy comes from rest, exercise, eating well, and optimism. It also comes from a, a product of the first two states. Greater clarity and awareness is empowering, and that feeling gives us more energy. When our bodies and minds feel and express personal energy, good things happen. We often attract good opportunities and helpful people into our life. I know that our energy levels are the keys to achieving many of our goals. I challenge clients to exercise, rest, drink less alcohol, dress well, pick up the pace, smile, read more books and watch less TV, pray for and care for others, be aware of your energy output because that is a fundamental way to stand out in the marketplace of life and business. In business, energy, in life, energy is everything. It all comes down to energy. By the way, as I taught young broadcasters for many years, if you want to be a broadcaster, if you want to be a performer, it's energy. The one with the energy and the clarity and the vitality and the personality usually wins in the media contests of life. Number four, <laughs> very useful. I often say coaching is about creating and directing and sustaining personal energy, and it's one of our greatest challenges, which leads to we can be very useful. Very useful by being creative and effective. Charles William Eliot said, Be unselfish. That is the first and final commandment for those who would be useful and happy in their usefulness. If you think of yourself only, you cannot develop because you are choking the source of development, which is spiritual expansion through thought for others. Unfortunately, many people are passive in their lives and work. They go with the flow. They do only what they have to do and merely react to life. Nothing great happens from living such a style. Others are active and they do things, but being active does not mean that things changed or that other things were created. Changing things that are important is what is effective and what is all about. Coming up with new ideas and building things that are helpful is creative. Coaching is to be far more effective. It's to be useful to ourselves, our organizations, and maybe our world by being more effective and creative. In coaching, I often say, what changed? Was it helpful? What effect did we have? Are you pleased with the result? Tell me why. That's what we mean by effective. We are also called to stretch our creative efforts to do things to help us grow artistically, intellectually, professionally, and spiritually. I often say that one of the goals of a coaching experiment is to go from being a watcher to a doer, to a change maker, to a creator. And that's useful. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur. Please do me a favor. Rewind this and listen to it again. 
I'm talking about the four vital, of the seven vital qualities that are necessary for you to be successful, not only in your business, as a career, as an entrepreneur, but then to be a teacher and a coach to guide to others. This is crucial. Go back and listen to the four vital things that coaching can do for you. I'd love to hear from you. I'm Stan Houston. Reach out to me at RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. Stan Houston at RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. And tell me, how can I help you? And I will do that. I will do everything I can to help you, to be useful to you. Because we are called by Almighty God to be useful. More on that tomorrow. Best and blessings. That's the story so far. Bye for now.